Hey everybody, I want to welcome you back to another episode of Westminster Wednesday, where each week we're looking at one question from the Westminster Shorter Catechism, and we're exploring its meaning and significance for our lives today. Now, in the last episode, we looked at the three offices of Christ, and we talked about how Christ holds the offices of a prophet, of a priest, and of a king. And in this episode, we're going to look more deeply at the first of those offices, the office of a prophet. So, question number 24 asks, how does Christ execute the office of a prophet? And the answer, Christ executes the office of a prophet in revealing to us, by his word and spirit, the will of God for our salvation. Now, in order to understand Christ's prophetic office, we need to understand something about prophets. In the Bible, prophets were men and women who were specially appointed and anointed by God to speak on his behalf and to speak his word to the people. And one of the first people we see serving as a as a prophet or in the prophetic office is Moses. Moses held more than one role uh, among the people of Israel, and he served as a mediator between God and the Israelites, but he also had a prophetic role. He also spoke God's word to the people. Now, what's interesting is that in the book of Deuteronomy, God told Moses that there would one day come another prophet like Moses, but who would be far superior to Moses. And in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, it says, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. So Deuteronomy talks about this greater prophet who was still to come. Now, in the years and the decades and the centuries after Moses, God did send many different prophets to speak his word to the people. Uh, He sent men like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel. And these prophets were the mouthpieces of God. In other words, when God chose to speak through them, it was as if God himself was speaking. And yet none of them, the Bible makes clear that none of them were actually the fulfillment of that prophecy in Deuteronomy 18 about this greater prophet yet to come. In order to see the fulfillment of that prophecy, we have to go to the New Testament. And the New Testament tells us that Jesus is the fulfillment of Deuteronomy 18. He is the great prophet who was foretold and who fulfilled that promise to Moses. Now, when we look at Jesus and his prophetic ministry, we see that Jesus was far superior to all of the former prophets in a couple of different ways. And the first way that Jesus was superior is that when Jesus spoke, he didn't just speak on behalf of God. He spoke as God. So as the son of God, Jesus was truly God speaking in the flesh. And so he didn't just serve as a spokesman for God. He was God speaking to us in the flesh. And what this means is that every single word that Jesus spoke was literally the word of God. So that's the first way Jesus is superior. He didn't just speak on behalf of God. He spoke as God. And the second way Jesus was superior to all the former prophets is that Jesus didn't just speak the word of God, he was the word of God. And we see this in the beginning of John's gospel. Um, In John chapter 1, it tells us, it describes Jesus as the word of God and says in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That description of Jesus as the word Uh, not only tells us that Jesus was the word of God, but that he himself was God and was equal with God. And so as the son of God, Jesus was and is the ultimate prophet. He came to show us the will of God for our salvation. And he didn't just show us the will of God for our salvation, but he also obtained our salvation for us by dying on the cross for our sins. And we'll look at that more deeply when we look at Christ's priestly office. But for now, as we look at his prophetic office, it's important to see that Jesus, as the Son of God, was the ultimate prophet who came to show us who God is and how we must be saved. He was superior to all the prophets who came before him. And in fact, all of the prophets who came before him foreshadowed him and pointed to him as the greatest prophet who was to come. 
Now, here's the last thing I want to say. Jesus is not just the ultimate prophet, but we also would affirm that he is the final prophet. The book of Hebrews talks about this and opens with these words in Hebrews chapter 1. It says, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But, it says, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things and through whom he also created the world. What that verse tells us is that after the coming of Christ, there is no longer any need for any more prophets. Why? Well, because God has sent the ultimate prophet by sending us his very own son to speak to us personally. Jesus, we might say, is the definitive revealing or the definitive revelation of God who has come to us. And therefore, after Jesus, there is no need for any further prophecy. There is no need for any further prophets because Jesus has definitively revealed to us who God is and spoken to us as the Son of God himself. And so we say that Jesus is the ultimate prophet. In him, we have the greatest prophet of all. And also in him, we have the final prophet that we will ever need because he was and is the Son of God.